try not to get me off track. Um, <laughs> Kim Jong Un hopped in a train, went to visit China. Why is this significant? Since he took power in 2011, he has never left the country, and there, there's not even been an exchange of high-level delegations between the two, which fueled thoughts that maybe they really weren't getting along too well. But if you think about it, Kim Jong Un's got two of the biggest meetings in his life. He's got the South Korean leader, and he's got President Trump in May. And why not meet with Kim Jong uh, with President Xi to maybe get the parameters? For example, maybe this is a question. If I get rid of my nuclear weapons, hypothetically, will you watch my back? How do I go about doing this? What should I do and what, time, what should I ask for from the Americans? What should I ask for from the South Koreans? Right. Because their objective is the same. They want, China wants a North Korea. We would like to see a unified uh, peninsula, but we don't necessarily right. need to have that. We just need to have a non-threat in North Korea. Well, what's interesting is this morning there is news that according to our spy agencies, apparently North Korea is firing up a, a reactor. That they what is the big deal? Just check yes or no. If you don't want to answer the question, they're not going to you're not going to get caught if you don't want to answer it. But what's the big deal? We want to know if you're a tax paying citizen, you're right. going to work every day to pay taxes so that everyone in this country can have roads, can have hospitals, can have whatever it is. Schools. That are tax schools. What's Security. the big deal? How many forms do you fill out uh, on a yearly basis where it says, are you a citizen? But how, many do, all the time. but how many do illegals fill out? None. Here is what the media reacted to that. They see something sinister in that request. Uh, bureau form. They actually asked, are you a citizen? Check that. That was in 2000. Michelle Malkin, who is on with us just about 90 minutes ago, had this pertinent observation regarding what's going on. Only in America does a country get sued for asking who's in it. It is complete insanity. Only in America do you have uh, sworn politicians who have taken an oath of office to uphold the laws and constitution of this country out there lambasting the Trump admi administration for asking a very simple question. What this is about is about power. More people, more seats. And if you can count uh, illegal aliens as part of that, it's no illegal alien left behind. That's what we're really talking about here. California's got a huge problem uh, the, for the illegals. Uh, they're going to push back on the census. They got about other 20 to 25 other, or maybe 25 states will be suing the government to get rid of that question on the census. Well, if they all want the criminal illegals to live in their communities, you were pointing out earlier, if you look at the map, there are several counties that are now pulling away from Opting it. Out. And that's the illegals are not going to go there anymore. So maybe they're getting their wish. All those criminal illegals are going to go to their areas because they're not going to get caught. Talk all about right. illegal, Jillian Mealy. I checked her status. She is here legally. Uh, oh, and we she think. Can stay. We think. Did no, you no, check I, it? You no, can't I ask checked. her. I, I did a background check. I will not yeah. confirm or deny. <laughs> I've also, okay. I did a thorough background check. You, you belong here. <laughs> I've what asked. else did you find yes. out? <laughs> yeah, tell me, tell I'll, me I'll about myself. I'll tell you while she's doing All right, guys. Good morning to you. Let's get you caught up starting with this Fox News alert. An illegal immigrant is on the run after escaping from ICE agents at the airport, hopping in a taxi and driving away. This happening overnight at JFK Airport in New York. Agents say he made a run for it after they took off his handcuffs to go through security. It's unclear where they were deporting him to. According to reports, the man was previously arrested on a weapons charge. And breaking overnight, protesters crashing a Sacramento City Hall meeting over the shooting death of Stefan Clark. Well, that right there, that's his brother jumping on the podium right in front of the Sacramento mayor. Demonstrators want the two cops who shot 20 rounds at Clark fired and charged. The officers responding to a call about a man breaking car windows. They claim he had a gun, but only a phone was found. Both officers are on leave. Closing arguments expected today in the trial of the Pulse terrorist widow. Nor Salman is charged with obstruction of justice and aiding and abetting Omar Mateen. Her attorneys claim she was an innocent victim, not an accomplice. But prosecutors say she knew about her husband's deadly plans and did nothing to stop it. Mateen killed 49 people in his ISIS-inspired attack in June of 2016. Salman faces up to life in prison. Sister Jean already set the men's NCAA tournament on fire, and now she is lighting up the sports merchandise world. The 98-year-old's new bobblehead isn't even out yet, and it's already the all-time bestseller at the Bobblehead Hall of Fame store. Now, this is a rendering 
of what it could look like. Loyola Chicago already made these bobbleheads of her in 2011, which are now being sold for 300 bucks on eBay. Wow. The team faces Michigan Saturday in the Final Four. Oh, 300 bucks. That's really something. <laughs> she was Sweet. asked uh, regarding basketball, uh, and she said, you know what I gave up for Lent? Losing! <laughs> and that's why they're the fun. So far, it's working. She it is so precious. She's the chaplain, right? Yep. All 98 right. years old. God it's amazing. Bless her. Hall of Fame. All right. Thank you very much, Jillian. Coming up, the video is insane. A state trooper stops to help a stranded driver on the street when Ooh. an out of control car, Ooh. look at that, sends him flying into another car. He survived and lived to tell the story. You're wow. going to hear that coming up. Plus, the Facebook, uh, Facebook is rocked by a whistleblower scandal and shady data collection. Our next guest was an early investor in Facebook. A message about the social network's privacy scandal and the misuse of data for up to 50 million users. That number could actually be bigger than that. Early Facebook investor and Mark Zuckerberg mentor Roger McNamee joins us right now live from Silicon Valley. Roger, good morning to you. It's a pleasure to be here. Facebook's in big trouble. Well, Steve, the, the, the problem we've got here is that they have a business model of advertising. And in order to get advertising to work, you have to have people's attention. And mm -hmm. Facebook has figured out this really clever way. They have 2.1 billion individual channels, one for each user. And they've figured out how to manipulate people's emotions to make the ads more valuable. The problem is the way they did that was by collecting every piece of data about everybody. And they were not honest about what they were collecting mm -hmm. or what they were doing with it. And that's what this whole battle is about. They, you know, it's not just the Cambridge Analytica stuff. The news broke this past weekend that if you have Facebook on an Android phone, right. that the, all of your Facebook, or sorry, all of your Android data is now in Facebook. And, you know, that's like half of all adult Americans. Right. I mean, that's a really, really huge problem. And, Zuckerberg needs to testify. He needs to tell us all of the things that people have because there are probably tens of thousands of applications that may have done that kind sure. of harvesting the same way Cambridge did. Right. And they need to get out there and tell us how they're going to prevent this in the future and how they're going to protect us from the consequences of the things that happened in the past. Absolutely. And Roger, this morning there are stories that maybe uh, your Facebook app is actually listening to you through your smartphone, so you've got to be wary of that. You know, if you, if you have a lawyer uh, helping you download apps. Maybe you would know, let's read the terms, the service agreement, and we would know that uh, Facebook is essentially entitled to all of our stuff on there. But people are in a hurry. They just click, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Well, but now we know the peril. And Steve, they signed a consent decree with the Federal Trade Commission because this is not the first time this came up. And in 2011, they were told that they had to have what, what is known in the legal trade as informed consent. They had to make it really obvious, and they did not do that. And the reality is you shouldn't have to read 20 pages of boilerplate right. to know what you're signing up for. That part's just not honest. And what I've been begging them to do since 2016 is to recognize that they have an obligation at the scale they're at. I mean, they have so much power they have to wield it appropriately and that's we've had a breakdown in that right. and you know what I would encourage everybody to do is go into your settings see what they know about you but also be really careful about what you're doing on social media because at the moment these companies and it's not just Facebook you know the issues Google, exist at, at Google and Twitter and other places yeah. and so they've got to be just more careful because these companies right now are doing a terrible job of self-regulation no kidding uh, here's kind of a personal question Roger do you have Facebook Yes. In fact, here's the thing. I love Facebook as an application, Steve. And it, this whole thing really bothers me because I've spent 35 years helping tech companies yeah. grow. And I was so proud of Facebook. I love the app. Everybody does. It's a really cool thing. And it just it frustrates, frustrates me enormously right. that my friends have gotten off track and they, they aren't taking responsibility for something right. that they, they alone exactly. can fix. Exactly. With uh, great power comes great responsibility. They forgot about that. Roger McMee, who has been a mentor to Mark Zuckerberg. Sir, thank you very much for joining us from Silicon Valley. Thanks for having me. You bet. All right. Uh, meanwhile, straight ahead, one former Supreme Court justice now calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Mr. Stevens, no way. We need more Republicans in 2018 and must always hold the Supreme Court. Our next guest is fired up about this. Graham Allen is an Army combat vet. 
Nine Line Apparel brand ambassador and host of Rant Nation on CRTV. He joins us live. Good morning, you, Graham. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. You know, back in the day, the founding fathers never could have forecast the advancements in technology regarding weapons, and you see a parallel, don't you? You're trying to, you're trying to get me, you're trying to get me upset already. No, uh -huh. I, I, that, I, that is one of my favorite things to hear people say is, oh, Graham, you know, the Founding Fathers couldn't have imagined that we'd have uh, automatic weapons or as some people like to call full semi-automatic, which is a completely made-up term in the first place. But that's a slippery slope to go down. If you believe that the Founding Fathers weren't intelligent enough to believe that hundreds of years of advances in technology, that we wouldn't have advances in weapon weaponry as well, mm -hmm. then you're not paying attention. But if you're going to go down that road, then what about the First Amendment? Surely the Founding Fathers didn't know that we would have newspapers, internet, vlogs, blogs, Twitter, Facebook, mass distributions of technology. Yeah. So maybe your First Amendment rights should be talked about as well. It's, it's a very dangerous mm -hmm. thing that we're doing right now. Very dangerous. Yeah, so, I mean, this is ludicrous, isn't it? it, it it's, it's not going to happen. You would have to have, what is it, two-thirds of Congress would have to agree, and it had to be ratified by 38 states. I, I think the biggest thing that needs to be said right now to, to Americans, because it, it's something that I don't hear enough and it bothers me the most, it's that our rights and our freedoms as Americans are not up for debate. They're just not. Uh, those, are, those are our rights. Those are our freedoms. Estimated 1.3 million veterans have lost their lives defending those rights and those freedoms. And the second that we go into discussions of, well, maybe we should, maybe we should take those away. You know, may, maybe it's well, too much. Well, how about much. this? When people say like this, uh, for example, when you get out of a car now, there's a little buzzer that says, "Check the rearview seat." because so many kids, so many parents, well-meaning parents, have left their kids in the car. Uh, when you go to, uh, there's airbags, so when you drive a car, you might be able to survive. If there were things that could be done with the Second Amendment to make it safer, are you for that? Adding and expanding upon a freedom is completely different than having a conversation that reduces a right and a freedom. Mm -hmm. I don't think anyone is against having conversations of how can we expand or improve or add to freedoms that we already have? But sure. when you start having discussions that take away, that's when you're going down the wrong when path. When it comes to gun control, road. then what are you for? I believe that there is a problem in the system of background checks, and, and I believe that we should be having discussions on improving that. But again, that's not the NRA's fault. That's not law-abiding gun mm -hmm. owners' fault. I think it's 38% of states only report 80% of their felonies into the systems in the first place. Sure. And we wonder how these people are passing background checks. And it, right. it, it, it's, it's an entire systems problem. And, and Graham, you agree with the president. The solution regarding what happened in Parkland about a month ago is to harden the schools. Yes. I can't even go to an airport with a Tootsie Roll in my pocket without somebody having questions. But yet these these people that have these ill intentions to harm others can just get into a school, walk around like they still are in the school yeah. with weapons on them in the first place. I completely, I don't think anyone is arguing the fact, how can we protect our children better? How can we protect our churches better, our hospitals better? All, and no, no, one, no one's arguing yeah, everyone's that. Everyone's for that. Everyone, yeah. absolutely everyone. The president for the uh, raising the age on rifles. He was open to that. Now he said he got big pushback on that. How do you feel about rifles like handguns go to the 21? I think that, again, that's a very dangerous slope. If you're old enough to join the military and go fight in a war with even higher power capacity weapons than we're talking about in the Exemptions first Exemptions for people in the uh, military? Well, no, I, I think it's a very dangerous slope. If 18 is too young to own a rifle, then how long before we start having conversations of, yeah. well, maybe 18 is too young to vote? Well, you're right. About too young to drink. Slopes, a lot of them. Graham, thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, thank Graham. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. That was pretty much. good. Well, it's about holding the employer accountable. Uh, there is the bill does say that if the employer harasses, uh, requires or retaliates uh, against the employee, then the employee can make a complaint to the city, which the city will then investigate to see whether it's valid or not. So if they do it once still. or twice, that's no big deal, but if they keep doing it, that's I mean, the they can call you, and that's important to know. They can call you, they can text you, they can email you. It's more about giving you the right to say no at the moment. But is this, is, 
I don't know how I feel about it because I do agree we need to put our phones down and we need to spend more time with our kids. But at the same time, if they're putting food on our table, allowing us to feed our kids, then don't they have the right to hear from us? Or we don't we aren't we supposed to pick up the phone? We spend a lot of hours in the office already, and I think that if there are very pressing matters that need to be taken care of, we can take care of during those hours. But at this point, uh, because of technology, because of digital age, it's encroaching into our personal lives, mm -hmm. and we're not getting paid what for it. What made you want to do this? Was there someone complaining in your Something life?